Well, I want to thank the 50 and more who care for giving us this opportunity. I think it's wonderful what you're doing for the community. Um, for those that don't know much about the co-op, I'm just going to real give a brief um, review. The co-op's actually been in Cumberland for 39 years, um, just about 30 of which I have been a part of and managing most of the time. I don't know where those years have all gone. Um, we've always been made ourselves proud of the fact of what we offer our community. Um, we actually draw from way outside of our local community. People come from many cities around to come to the Island City Food Co-op, which makes us feel pretty good. We've gained a, um, a trust with people, with knowing they can get quality foods that were there for personal service, which you don't get now a lot in other stores. Um, we also provide um, employment for usually up to seven to nine people. We buy from a lot of local people. There's well over a couple dozen that we buy, local farmers, local businesses, that we help sustain them also. Um, the last few years, I will be honest and say it's been a struggle, as it has been for many small businesses. That's even before the COVID, which hit. Um, so there's been the highs and the lows. Um, but the last few years, I will be honest, like I said, a year and a half ago, we were at a T in the road of saying, can we stay open? Can we, how, what can we do? And we had a great board of directors and myself, and we got together, we made some cuts here and there. We did some changes, um, put the notice out, which I give weekly emails um, to our membership. And the feedback was phenomenal, they, phenomenal, phenomenal. They want us there. No matter what, this community, and I, there's many nights, you know, I feel almost like crying when knowing the people that want us in Cumberland. But it's also been very trying. So anyway, as of, of this last year, we were really proud to end our fiscal year back in just about the black again. Um, and then COVID hit. So we're back to Ben struggling, trying to keep the community safe, keep our staff safe, stay open. Um, I'll be honest, also, we were fortunate enough to be one of the ones that uh, uh, obtained the PPA, um, the payroll protection plan. So at this point, I've actually submitted back our request for um, forgiveness. I don't know how long that's going to take, and, you know, we're saying our prayers that that does happen. That did help us through the eight weeks um, immensely to be able to go, to go forward. Um, and keep our staff on board. Um, now, of course, that's been used up and we're going forward again. Um, things have been tight. Um, I'll admit also the last couple months um, on our financials, we're now back to operating in the red again um, with future hopes that everything can work out. Um, so that's kind of my, our background. I said we I said, well, we feel like we've always had a a compassion for people for eating well. I mean, none of us are perfect, um, but we do have the trust of good food. And I will say the bakery for how many years in Cumberland and even when we were actually went to um, curbside only for a couple months, the outpouring of, of disgust, not disgust, um, disappointment in not having their bakery. Because nowadays there's a lot of people that call themselves bakeries, but they're not made fresh. And that we have the opportunity to have Spooner Bake Shop delivered to us five days a week with fresh baked has been an asset, I feel, to our community also. Um, so everyone's happy that at least we're opening the doors again. But anyway, we are, we are also struggling as many, many small businesses are. I know we aren't the only ones. Um, the question was, what would we do with the money? How do we need the money? Um, there's two big things coming up um, that we're trying to plan for that has not been able to been put into the budget at this point. One of which is our, um, our walk-in freezer and cooler, which is, which is essential to our business. Um, we had problems in just before the COVID hit and they didn't know if they could fix it. We were able to do a patch job, but um, they're talking about the time is coming soon to get a new compressor and evaporator all the stuff that's involved with that. Um, I would have liked to have come here with the actual estimate of that repair. Benedict's did come into our store last Wednesday, and he said it'd be about a week and a half before he could give us the total, but we're guessing in that three to 5,000 to be able to do what we have to do. 
So that's kind of like we're hoping to be able to eventually do a planned outage rather than here we go. You know, we lost a lot of stuff back in March when it went down on us. Um, so we're hoping to plan for a planned outage. The other thing is another need that's an essential need is one of our coolers in our main storeroom has been having problems for a number of years. Um, and it's on the verge of how many times do we fix it? So we have a dream of being able to upgrade more energy efficient in that area, which would help us. The wish list, the dream list that I personally have had for a number of years and now more so this year is to be able to have some outside seating. Especially now with our limited, we can't have our little coffee people sitting, not little people, we can't have our, our coffee people sitting down right now inside from our limited size inside the cafe. And we would love to be able to have something outside, but then again, with limited budget, um, there is an area out to the east that actually our, our landlord, Tom, had always wished when he was the baker, he could do some kind of a deck with a shelter back out there that people could sit back there and have their coffee outside, you know, for a number of months. Um, so that's one of our big wish lists. When I sent in the application, I did say that we were talking about the espresso, um, but now since then I've also had close contact with Vicki and I know she is thankfully going to pursue having something in Cumberland, which there again, it's a much needed, people need their specialty coffees. We are proud to serve organic coffee. Um, which is also um, a, a big pull for many people. It's just not the lattes. <laughs> um, so I'm not, we won't go that way at all. Um, we're doing one more to our essential of keeping us alive. And so the coolers is essential because without them, we can't keep the extra, bring in the amount of beautiful produce that we have to go forward. Um, I think you know if we were fortunate enough to be chosen, we would be good stewards of the funds um, and do our best to keep the community healthy and happy and keeping our doors open. You know, I said, I'm, sometimes I believe I'm a little crazy to put this many years into this commitment. Um, it has become my life. Really, this last 30 years has been making sure the doors are open and, and doing the best I can. And I hope that I can present this well enough that um, give us a good understanding of where we're coming from and what the, said the outlying areas. Um, you know, we draw, it's not just Cumberland, it's Rice Lake, it's, it's Clear Lake, it's Spooner, the people that come to the Island City Food Co-op and are say, your doors have to stay open. So we're doing our best and I appreciate, said again, the 50 who care who are doing this for the community, for all of us that need it. I, I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with what you've put together. Um, and I thank you for this time.